year, the London Borough of Richmond 110 celebrates its 50th birthday. 2015 marks the anniversary of the creation of all of the London boroughs. On the 1st of April 1965, 32 new boroughs were formed alongside the name Greater London by the London Government Act of 1963. In our project, Joined by the River, the Richmond Arts Service explored the exciting changes that took place between 1963 and 1967. Richmond upon Thames is the only London borough to be joined by the river. In April 1965, the municipal boroughs of Barnes, Richmond and Twickenham were formally joined to create the London Borough of Richmond upon Thames. As part of our project exploring this exciting period of change in the 1960s, we asked local residents and people involved in those democratic changes to share their memories. We conducted oral history interviews with people throughout the borough about the period. This council is actually unique, it's very unusual, because the three, bar three boroughs that came together to form it, Barnes, Twickenham and Richmond, were either side of, of the River Thames, and we're the only borough in London actually that has the river flowing right through um, and really binding us together in, uh, in, in, in this rather beautiful parkland that sounds sat, either side of the river. I'm uh, Geoffrey Samuel, currently Deputy Leader of the Council, but I was in fact originally first elected as a councillor uh, in 1957. So by the time of the formation of what I still think of as the new borough, um, I was al already an experienced councillor and therefore was uh, lucky enough to be deeply involved in the establishment of the new borough. And I would say that for all the years that I've been in local government, it was far and away the most uh, exciting time Imagine that you started with an absolutely blank sheet of paper and from the very beginning could build up and establish the, the council in, in the way that we wanted and of course that led on to the appointment of all the chief officers. It really was certainly the most exciting time of my civic life. So a really wide range of people involved in this project, from local community who are involved in researching the exhibition to young people who are involved in setting up the exhibition and doing a fantastic education programme. Um, we also had a fantastic range of oral history volunteers that kind of described all of their stories. Our first child was born in 1963. Our searches are gradually spread westward across South London, so a move to a house with a garden became a priority and we finally settled on Barnes. I had slight knowledge of Barnes from boat race days with picnics on Barnes Common. There were the lovely parks, of course, and the nurseries were still in existence. I used to go up there to buy my cucumber and tomatoes. There was some talk of the new borough being named the Thames Valley. The creation of a new borough also meant that a new coat of arms, motto, and mayoral chain had to be designed. It was incredibly successful, so over 12,000 people were involved in the exhibition, either viewing the exhibition or involved in the education and community programme. And special thanks goes to our wonderful volunteers that made this all possible through their research. My main role on the project was researching the local newspapers. Um, between about 1962 and 66, obviously looking at the stories about the new borough and how that related um, because probably thinking about it in those days, the local paper was one of the main sources for people to find the information out. I found it a challenging and extremely educational process. Um, and I, I learned what was the meaning of civic pride and, and how much our councillors do and how hard they work. It's also quite poignant for me because I was a teenager in the borough of Twickenham when all this came to pass. I really have enjoyed working on the project. The other thing that I think I've been so impressed by is the immense uh, commitment and attachment that people have had. Thousands of people have come forward with their oral memories of the way that the borough has developed and changed over these 50 years. And it's also been incredibly humbling to meet, actually, some of the people who were there at the beginning. They're actually still members of this authority who were active in local politics 50 years ago. And we had the immense privilege of having one of the first 
and mayoresses, mayor's consorts of this borough who lend so generously to uh, this very popular exhibition. It did bring back, it was a, a bit of a sentimental journey when looking at the photographs and going into the exhibition. And the most amazing thing was walking into Orleans Gallery, House Gallery, and suddenly plonk on a, a model, there is my dress. And it was lovely because I went on a sentimental journey looking at it all, it was rather nice. So overall it's been an absolutely fantastic project to work in, it's really involved the local community and it's been fantastic to see how enthused everyone's been about learning about the fantastic history of the borough and how the borough has created, there's been a lot of really interesting points of learning and it's left a fantastic legacy for the future for people to have this oral history really identified and recorded and these fantastic stories to be brought to life and made available in the public eye.